Some other areas of concern we have with uh, the use of darts in particular is the fact that we're starting to find broken needles appearing in the finished product as it comes out of packing plants. Uh, that's totally unacceptable. There's a zero tolerance for those, uh, any kind of broken needle, whether it be remote delivery system or whatever, in our muscle tissue. The only way to know if you have a broken needle is to actually examine the dart at the end of the injection process and see if that uh, needle is still on there. And what we're finding as well is that people are using darts but not collecting them once the injection is over with and leaving them to drop out of the animal at a later date, a later time. Uh, these are designed to do that, but we also find those darts laying in pastures lead to additional injury and foot injury in cattle or being picked up and consumed and chewed by other animals in the pasture. So if you are using that remote delivery system, you, you need to pick the darts up. You need to inspect them. You need to see if there's any issues with broken needles. Another concern we're having now is that we're finding actual darts embedded in the muscle tissue. So either they are hitting at the wrong angle and going through the skin uh, into the muscle tissue and not being retrieved. Uh, what, you don't know if the animal's actually been treated with what they were expe expected to be treated with, but also finding that embedded dart is totally unacceptable in a finished meat product. So we have to make sure that we know how those are going in, how they're being injected in the animal and retrieve those darts to know whether or not the needle was broken. If it was, then that animal needs to be identified and that needle re, uh, removed uh, before it ever enters the food chain. If it cannot be found, that animal should never enter the food chain. So it's no different than what we have if we had an animal in a chute and broke a needle off in it. And we are starting to find more dart needles in meat. And so we need to make sure that we are diligent in finding those darts, following up if they are used. But once again, in this current state, we really can't recommend using a remote delivery system because we don't know enough about withdrawal times, impact of the uh, pharmaceutical products on the immune system, on the antibiotics, residues that might be found in the meat. So until we know more, I would use proceed with caution in using any kind of remote delivery system in beef cattle. I'll take just a moment to talk about the delivery system and and the darts that are associated with it. They come from very low dose uh, capacity up to a 10 cc. This is actually a 5 cc dart. Uh, they will come with either a metal barb on them to where they would stay in the animal until all the dose is delivered. And most tranquilizers uh, will have the metal barb on them to where they can actually retrieve the dart when the animal goes down. The near darts are made with a uh, dissolvable uh, substance around the needle that will go through the skin, hang into the skin, and it will slowly dissolve as it moistens, it will loosen up and the needle will fall out. So all of these are going to fall out in the animal, but it will take time. And as they're moving around, that needle's also moving around in the tissue and causing tissue damage and more trauma to that tissue as the animals move. So uh, there are some concerns with how that needle is in there. And if you watch one of them, once it's in an animal, it will actually move around and, and move with the muscle tissue. But these are placed uh, in the rifle after they've been charged. They are set with a air charge in the bottom in these particular darts. You have to draw the, the product up in a syringe and actually put the needle down in the, uh, the needle of the dart, inject it into the syringe very slowly. Uh, and then some are adding water to it to fill the syringe all the way to the top so it will uh, be completely full. Once again, we don't know what that does to the antibiotic once you put it in there with that. And that's where compounding also occurs. They'll use two different products into the same syringe. So when we're using darts like this, we have to be very careful of what we're doing. And there, there may be a place for them, but right now we don't know enough about them to be very confident that they will fit within our beef quality assurance standards.